G'day guys, Jeff here, and I have my own version of where the fuck has Saspen been. You know, it's almost like a findsaspen.com, and that's exactly what you're looking at on the screen at the moment. It's a findmakarov.com, and as you can see, there's a countdown, um, which we'll get to later on. Um, Hypermole told me, uh, because I've been away, as you know, and I'll update you on that, but Hypermole told me it's it's a uh, Call of Duty-inspired project, and uh, I don't know what any what content's behind it or anything like that. Uh, I assume it would be some sort of, uh, you know, uh, machinima-type uh, uh, movie, small movie, or uh, something like that, but we'll, we'll get to see. Um, so as that countdown goes down, I'll update you on what's been happening. You may have recalled that I've been snowboarding a bunch. Well, that was still going on until, you know, the snow is pretty much uh, around here anyway. It's useless now. Um, I went up to Canada a couple of times. Banff and Revelstoke are fantastic, and I will uh, keep going back there while I live in the States. Um, so hopefully I'll try to do that uh, every year. Um, outside of those two places, I think the last best place I've been, when the snow's good, mind you, is Nasiko in Japan, or Hakuba. Um, and those two places, when it's actually snowing in, say, late January, early February, are also fantastic. But uh, the last few years, they've been a bit crap, so, you know, um, Canada definitely wins it for me. I'll uh, head over to uh, Utah and Colorado uh, next year as well, so we'll see what we can um, get out of that trip, but uh, I really enjoyed uh, Banff and uh, Revelstoke. So, uh, apart from doing the snow trips, I also went overseas to Serbia, and uh, I had quite a few emails uh, asking me if I was Serbian, because we actually have some Serbian uh, watches to the channel, which is quite cool. Uh, no, I'm not Serbian, I'm fully, uh, you know, white Australian, um, but... Um, I have a mate who I helped move his business over there and uh, like I helped him move his, uh, well I moved his telephony over there so he could use uh, voice over IP or SIP calls and look like he's still uh, working from Australia etc cetera, etc cetera. you know because you can hire a lot more people over there and yeah, you know, he, he likes the, the, what the women look like so he ends up having a, an office full of 30 women who are under 25 years of age uh, working for him so that works out really well for him and uh, he can obviously live like a king because there's no taxes on foreign earned income so all the money he earns from Australia absolutely no tax um, so he gets the lower prices and and does amazing things with his money like five motorcycles and three cars and you know d does all sorts of things um, so uh, that trip was quite cool I'll give you a quick funny story about the last time well actually I've been to Serbia about eight or nine times now but I'll give you a really funny story about what happened once before this countdown finishes um, so I uh, was in um, a place called Novi Sad in Serbia. I was uh, helping my mate set up and then I uh, ended up jumping on a bus and uh, going into Zagreb, uh, Croatia, just because I wanted to catch up with a mate and have a look around Zagreb and whatnot. Because um, I've only had previously driven through there. Not much to see, but you know, we, had, we hung out, had a good time. And then the, uh, two days later, I had a mate who is a truck driver. Now, he's not really my mate. He's just someone I know uh, from Serbia. Now, he's really a strange uh, mix. He has a, uh, a um, Bosnian passport, or Bosnian papers, I should say, because they don't really have passports back then. But Bosnian papers lives in Serbia with a Croatian name. And if you know the Serbo-Croat war that was going on with uh, Bosnia, Sarajevo, and the Serbs and Croats, it was, um, it's kind of strange. And when the police see that he has a Croatian name living in Serbia with a Bosnian, with Bosnian papers, they always stop him. I didn't know this at the time, but anyway, he's uh, doing a truck delivery from Croatia back to, um, back to Serbia, and he says he'll give me a lift. So I jump in the truck with him and Pretty soon we're hopping along the highway, and then he pulls off the highway to do back roads. I said to him, why are you going you know, down the back roads? And I'll pay for the highway tolls. He goes, no, 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 fuck it. You know, this place, this way is just as quick, and uh, you know, it'll be uh, cheaper for the tolls anyway. And he just didn't get it through his thick head that you know, I would pay the extra $2 difference to get there you know, an hour sooner on a freeway. But anyway, I, I trusted him, and we went through... Um, a border stopping, so going into back into Serbia um, in a remote area, and in this remote area, there's only truckers. And in Eastern Europe, most of the truckers are just uh, Turkish drivers. And now that Romania is in the EU, there's a lot of Romanian drivers as well. But this was before Romania jumped into the EU. So um, yeah, he says, "Oh, you know, I, I usually someone I know works here, so we'll get through really quick." Anyway, he goes up to check. He takes all the trucks' paperwork, and he's 
the person he knows isn't working there. Now, Eastern Europe works on the whole, it's who you know system. So if you know a police officer and you get pulled over speeding, you can get off. If you, uh, you know, it, it's just the way that that culture works. It's, it's your connections that um, further you in life uh, many times. So, you know, he's uh, the person that he knew wasn't there. And he said, we have to do it the old fashioned way. So he put his truck in a big line, walked out the front and uh, took the passports. Now, on the initial inspection, and by taking passports, he took his uh, his Bosnian paperwork and my Australian passport. And um, then when my passport was presented, all of a sudden I had uh, guards running down towards his truck. Um, this is at a, you know, at a customs border. Um, we're, we're in no man's land because we've already left one country and we're in a line to get into another country. And uh, all these guards run up to the truck and they tell me to get out. And... Um, he was translating for me because none of them spoke English, but effectively he, they wanted to question me further and, and bring all my luggage to a little room. So they, you know, they didn't even let me bring my luggage. I just pointed out which was mine, including my laptop bag. They took that, they took my suitcase and uh, trotted me off under gun uh, cover. And at the time it was just handguns, which was fine. Uh, I owned a few handguns in Australia and they took me back to um, a little room and said, uh, you know, in broken English, and I must wait here. And you know, and Niego at the time, the guy who was who's a truck driver, translated it for me. And then they basically told him to fuck off because I know fuck off in Serbia, it's like yeba, yebi, yebi, uh, uh, yebi, or something like that. Anyway, they told him to uh, um, get get out of the room, and he said he'll be back to me in English. And then they sort of pushed him for saying anything to me, and they left the room. Um, so well, over the course of the next four hours. They, uh, you know, I mean, obviously had my passport. They were on the phone to a few people. They made me turn on and uh, log on to my laptop. Um, but you know, I logged on to an, a local account, so it wasn't even my main account. So they couldn't even access the files that I would want them to see anyway. But they didn't know any difference. So I logged on to that, and then they had started having a look at for things through the computer. They have no idea what they're looking for, and neither do I. Um, and then they went through my bag, went through my luggage. They asked if I had drugi on me, which is drugs, and I was like, no, no, I don't have drugs on me or anything like that and uh, as it turned out uh, you know maybe four and a half hours later now they came back and then said where the um uh, they came back with a guy who can speak a little bit of English and uh, we had to wait for him to drive there and it was at this time it was already 3.30 in the morning I think uh, maybe quarter to four in the morning and uh, they basically said uh, you, know, d you know am I an Australian spy and you know I said what are you talking about and then Niego was allowed back in to translate as well but effectively uh, two years earlier they actually caught a real Australian spy there who was pretending to work for Care Australia and apparently this border was, used to be so easy to get through that that's where they used to go through so now that uh, you know I was the, effect, effectively the first Australian um, the next Australian again to go through through there two years later and they're thinking aha jackpot we've got another Australian spy and it was during this line of questioning that um, some guys came in, uh, one, two guys came in, but one of them left and they had, uh, he had an MP5 or looked like an MP5 uh, machine gun. And, um, you know, he was standing watch over me. Uh, there was a bad, tele you know, little television playing black and white um, in the corner with uh, some Serbian or Croatian TV show, who knows. And um, I'm basically getting grilled because they asked me what I do for a living and, you know, to show them the computer and whatnot. And I did all this. Um, by then, uh, my Australian embassy uh, must have uh, confirmed who I was and who I wasn't. And, uh, you know, their own agencies must have confirmed that I'm not a spy and I travel a lot and I've been there, you know, six times prior or whatever. And uh, they eventually let me go. And, you know, it was, it was great. You know, it was a five-hour ordeal in the end. And, um, you know, they dropped their guns. They uh, gave me a slap on the back and basically said, okay, go. And Diego says, jump in the truck. Let's go quickly. Get all my bags together. I have to carry them back myself, the little pricks. Uh, chuck them back in the truck and off we go. And then when I looked through my bags, I noticed the fuckers stole my Toblerone. I had a Toblerone chocolate that was in my laptop bag, and now it's no longer there. So, you know, I get interrogated for all this time, under gun protection, in a little room. Uh, they think I'm a spy, and in the end, all they do is steal some fucking chocolate from me. Anyway, here's the Makarov, fine Makarov site. I was really disappointed about this. Countdown now zero, and watch what happens. So hopefully they'll increase their server load or something like that, and we'll actually see what this uh, COD inspired project is all about anyway i'm back in philly and uh hopefully i can get some videos out to you guys shortly until next time see ya